What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we have some Destiny 2 news to jump in and talk about. So we've got some important updates from Bungie, some fixes, and some more exploits in the game. We're going to talk about a pretty crazy damage glitch with the Hunter Arkstrider. We've got some updates about the Revelry event, the new exotic quest, and yes, Arbalist will be available for any player of Forsaken. So we'll talk about that and a few additional details. Bungie talk about Guardian Con for this year, and what could be some possible reveals for fall content. Looks like things are going to get pretty interesting in the summer. And on top of this, of course, we get Season of Opulence. Bungie have some new updates about enhancement cores, bounties, and some things that they're doing with that in Season 7. So guys, as always, if you enjoy this video, a like below really helps me out. But otherwise, let's jump straight into it. So firstly, we got an update from Bungie on some pretty important issues. A new hotfix went out today that solved some problems in the game, and this includes that players can now claim their Season 6 Pinnacle weapons once again. So we spoke about that glitch earlier on in the week, where players were able to essentially reclaim those weapons over and over again. Bungie had to disable the weapons and the vendors, but if you have been affected by this, you can now go and pick up those weapons. On top of this, they've re-enabled the Gambit Prime bonus perks for the Sentry armor set, and that includes Sentry synths as well. So that was another exploit where they had to disable the bonuses is, but that should now be working. However, on top of this, they have disabled Wave Splitter for non-PS4 players. So some folks were able to access the weapon, and if you did get it on Xbox or PC, then Bungie won't be taking it away, We just unfortunately won't be able to actually equip the weapon until September 2019, when it does become available on all platforms. And presumably, that September date will also run alongside Season 8, and this is going to be a pretty interesting time for the game, as we don't entirely know what Bungie are going to do for that fall expansion. But then of course there is the Year 3 content as well, and according to reliable sources, as well as teases from Bungie, we can expect a stream of Year 3 content in some form. But yeah, there's also speculation as to whether PlayStation could still see exclusives after September this year. It's possible that things could change now that Bungie aren't with Activision, but we'll have to wait and see. A couple of other quick updates for the game right now though. Arc Strider actually has a bit of a bug, so Bungie buffed the combination blow ability, and you can now stack damage with that. However, when you pop your super, if you stack that times three, it will actually affect your super's damage. And this is something that Bungie have actually recognized. So they say, we are looking into Arc Strider supers and their ability to achieve higher than intended damage against bosses when mixing certain perks. Until fixed, you may notice bosses in Gambit or other activities being pummeled into the ground by hunters and their arc staffs and we'll keep you updated on the status of our investigation. So Bungie very much want people to know about this. And a brief explanation of how it actually works, of course, you can stack the combination blow damage buff up to three times, and the bug is allowing this damage buff to actually carry over to the super. But on top of this, if you pair it with Synapse Junctions, which of course is the bonus that you get from the Raiden Flux, then you get even more damage and it is absolutely ridiculous. So I figured I may as well let you guys know how it works, seeing as Bungie are also talking about it. And yeah, it's possible you could run into it in game modes like Gambit, but otherwise it could be kind of fun in PvE stuff, until Bungie fix it at least. So let us know down below if you've experienced that one. Now though, let's talk about some upcoming event content and changes to the game. We've learned quite a bit about the Revelry event recently. We're going to talk about some other quest and reward stuff right here. We now know that Arbalest will be coming from this event, and during the event it is purchasable with Reveler's Essence, which you can pick up by grinding bounties and completing the new activity, the Verdant Forest. However, Cosmo did confirm that Arbalest will be a completely random drop in the loot table after the event concludes. So if you don't pick it up during the revelry, you can pick it up randomly after the event. And now we know why it does say random world drops or engram drops. On top of this, Cosmo did confirm that we will be able to pick up Arbalest without owning the annual pass. So this isn't a DLC exotic. As long as you weren't forsaken, then you can pick up Arbalest because, of course, the revelry is a free live event. And so, presumably, does that make this the exotic quest that is on the roadmap? Well, I think it's definitely likely, but we'll have to wait and see. But before we can do any of that, we will have to complete an opening quest for the event. And we can see this one via Light GG. So we'll have to visit Eva Levante, the returning event vendor in the tower, and use a Reveler's Tonic to apply good moods. So basically, we'll be able to pop one of the new kind of ability buffs that we're going to get for the event. And then we need to take a Revelry bounty, go into the Verdant Forest, complete that. And upon returning to Eva, we can actually start picking up multiple bounties and grinding for some of the rewards. And once again, Reveler's Essence is going to drop from these and can be used to make purchases, including for weapons like Arbalest. So that's going to be pretty neat. And Bungie did show off the new armor pieces. These are actually earned by defeating bosses in Infinite Forest. The more bosses that you kill, the greater the chance to actually get an armor piece dropped. So that's pretty cool in itself. But on top of this, there will be some weekly bounties that will actually drop powerful versions of these armor pieces. So throughout the course of the event, you're pretty much guaranteed to get every piece of armor. And there are revelry ornaments as well. These are the kind of crazy horns and wings that you can apply to the helmets for the event. And to pick them up, they'll drop randomly from packages purchased with Reveler's Tonic. 
We can see one in the database right here though. It does say, equip this armor ornament to change the appearance of your mask. This item is visible only during the revelry. So by the sounds of it right there, you can apply these ornaments to the armor pieces, but they'll only actually kind of glow while the reverie event is live. I think that's definitely a shame if that's the case. There's definitely been a hunger from the audience to have more of this kind of stuff in the game. So personally, I think it would be cooler if we could keep the ornaments after the event goes away, but let us know your thoughts about that down below. And of course, on top of this, there is that trailer for the revelry if you didn't check it out. It's in Bungie's blog article, and it's also in my video from yesterday. But in this week at Bungie, they talk about GuardianCon for 2019. And of course, this event has raised millions for charity and has always been a Destiny-focused event, but Bungie are saying this is an event that folks will want to attend. And this year, it's actually happening on July 5th and 6th, but Bungie say we're sending an away team from Seattle to Orlando and we're cooking up some fun ideas for what you can get your hands on if you join us. Last year, it was an absolute blast to meet so many Guardians from the Destiny community and host a Gambit Invitational. Whether it's witnessing clan members meeting for the first time, watching 1v1 Crucible tournaments, or just making new friends in the Gambit line, these memories will live for ages to come. But Bungie do say this is our strong recommendation that you get your tickets now and we'll unpack exactly what we have planned for our booth in the weeks to come. But Bungie developers will be on site to shake your hand and thank you for being a Guardian. Destiny will be playable. There will be loot. But they finished by saying, we're working on some other fun surprises for the show, and we'll tell you more about those soon. So of course, the last year, before Gambit had actually been released as part of Forsaken, it was playable at GuardianCon. But of course, on top of the fantastic community event in general, it looks like Bungie could actually be showing off some pretty cool stuff. It's entirely possible, based on what they're saying, that that will be some of the future content that we might get in September or beyond. And it's especially cool because Bungie are integrating more with kind of community events, and this could be the way that they deliver some of this information in the future. So let us know your thoughts about it down below. But Bungie are definitely teasing some pretty cool stuff. I'll link the GuardianCon website below as well, so definitely go check it out. Next though, DMG put out an update on Bungie's plan for enhancement cores and mod components, as well as some new bounties in Season 7. So a quick update on what they spoke about a couple of weeks ago, and they do say this stuff could change, but originally announced in the TWAB, there are going to be some new bounties available at the Gunsmith that you can use to get enhancement cores. They'll actually require Glimmer to purchase, and there are going to be multiple daily bounties to complete, each rewarding one enhancement core and now two mod components as well. In addition to this, there will be two weekly bounties to complete and these will each grant one enhancement core, one mod for a weapon or armor piece, and other material or reputation slash rank points depending on the objective of the bounty. They just point out he means things like Valor or Infamy and not glory points for comp. So what do you guys think about that? Personally, I still feel like it would be more rewarding to get kind of bundles of enhancement cores as opposed to one enhancement core. The addition of mod components and mods actually dropping from these bounties is definitely good though. I think also the fact that you can get reputation or rank points. So if you have a bounty that requires you to go into Gambit or something or PVP, then we'll actually get infamy or valor points along the way. I think it definitely sounds better than the first iteration of gunsmith bounties we heard about, but definitely I know there is still going to be very mixed feedback on this subject, so above all, let us know your thoughts on it down below. Couple of quick final updates here. Vicarious Visions tweeted, and Bungie actually sent them a pretty awesome Polaris Lance replica. We can see it's really detailed right here, and of course Vicarious Visions are just kind of wrapping up or have finished wrapping up their final Destiny project, which is Penumbra. So pretty cool stuff, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. And personally, I really appreciate a lot of the content that Vicarious Visions have made. I've spoken about it before, but they did a lot of stuff for Warmind. They built locations like the Tangled Shore and helped to build the Scorn. They've definitely helped to produce a lot of content in Destiny 2. So that's a pretty cool token of recognition. But right here, shout out for PlayStation players. All PS4 owners can now change their online ID. And I thought it was worth a mention because Bungie have confirmed that this shouldn't affect anyone playing Destiny. There were some warnings that went alongside this that it could affect games and account linking, things like that. But Bungie have tested it and they say for any players who play Destiny or want to change their name, it shouldn't affect any linking to your Bungie profile or stat tracking from back in D1 or anything like that. So you're all good on that front. But some final updates from Bungie right here. A couple of known issues. The Lost Cryptarch quest, of course, has returned. If you are trying to do that one, they do say they're investigating an issue where players who have full pursuits inventory can claim the Lost Cryptarch quest from Amanda Holiday, but it disappears and can't be reclaimed. On top of this, they are investigating an issue where the Massacre Medal sometimes isn't dropping for players in Gambit Prime. I don't know whether that's something that's been introduced after the recent update, but of course that may be a medal you're trying to get for something like the Reckoner title. So Bungie are aware of those and I'll keep you posted if there is any news. But also in their update, Bungie talk about the Destiny comic collection. So it's now available for pre-order, and you can see there's a pretty neat emblem that you can get right there if you pre-order as well. But this will be the Cade 6 Part 1, 
The budgies say it sets the stage for a showdown between the notorious Hunter Vanguard and the vile scorned barons who eventually orchestrated his demise. This is no eulogy, it's an adventure, it is action, and it's a reminder that while a hero may be gone, he will always be remembered through the many stories that carve his legend. So pretty cool stuff. In addition, the Destiny Comic Collection Volume 1 is available for pre-order on the Bungie store, and that features all of the previous comics, as well as the upcoming Cade 6 Part 2 comic. So pretty awesome stuff if you want to check that out. And there are also some details in Bungie's update about the Bungie Gauntlet for 2019. Pretty cool Bungie fundraiser. It's taking place on May 19th. They'll be raising some money for charity, and there are some pretty cool prizes that you can get by donating as well, including a cool emblem. So definitely worth checking that out. The link and all the details for that will be down below. But otherwise, for today, guys, I suppose we have a few days left to wait until the Revelry event goes live. We can start grinding for Arbalest and maybe some of that cool armor as well. Let us know if you're going to jump in. I'm certainly looking forward to hopefully some cool reveals over the summer, as well as more details about Season 7. I mean, it's definitely a good few weeks away, but it's creeping up, man. For now, though, guys, thank you as always for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this video, a like below is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more D2 content. For now, though, I hope you guys have an awesome day.